The Christ. When this Greek word is uttered, it is unfortunate that most people immediately, unconsciously interpret it, destroy it through their psychological conditioning. That great and sacred word, the Christ. For most people, if you ask them if they know what Christ is, they say yes, but they do not. They only think they know what Christ is. Even most modern day Christians will say that Christ is Jesus, the man. While that is part of the truth, it is not the deeper truth. In actual truth, if we want to know the reality to which the word Christ points to, we have to strive very hard in developing our own heart through practice. The word Christ refers not to a person, but to a great cosmic intelligence at the root of all life. The Christ is at the heart of every atom in the universe. And more importantly, we need to comprehend that Christ is something deep within our own being and that it is possible to incarnate that Christic force of love within us. It is a potentiality, a possibility within each and every one of us. This is not something easy or quick to attain, but a tremendous path that we can take if we choose it. Jesus, or Yeshua, was a man who did this, who incarnated the Christ. So we have to distinguish between Christ, the force, and Jesus, the man. Jesus, the man, attained union with the force of Christ. Jesus was, is a Christified master and his life was an immense teaching because he didn't teach the mysteries of Christ as an intellectual like we would, but instead his life itself was a divine play, an expression of the Christ energy itself. That's why Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light. This means to follow the light of our own internal Christ God Master and follow the impulses we receive from him to transform ourselves. It does not mean to follow some external person. So Christ is not a human or a divine individual. Christ is a title given to all fully self-realized masters. Several masters have incarnated the Christ. In India, Krishna is Christ. And the yogi Babaji incarnated the Christ. Also, the great master Sanat Kumara is another living Christ. Muhammad is also a Christ master. In Mexico, the Christ is Quetzalcoatl. 
In Egypt, Christ was known as Osiris, and whoever incarnated him was known as an Osirified one. We also have Buddha Shakyamuni as a Christ, and the term Buddha Maitreya is a title given to any Christified Buddha. Samael Onvior himself is a Christified Master, a Buddha Maitreya. Every religion has the Christic principle present in all of its teachings, because all religions are one. As Master Samael said, all religions are precious pearls strung on the golden thread of divinity. So what is unfortunate and what happens to most of the teachings that these Christified masters give to us is that they go up for egotistical interpretation and manipulation and their sacred words become adulterated through the ego mind of humanity and we lose almost every essence of understanding what they were really trying to show us. For example, Christmas or Christ Mass, which is today, is not about the birth of Jesus. Christmas is about the descent of the Christ force into the Master Jesus. It's about the day he became a Christified one, an anointed one. It's a tremendously divine celebration and is also reflected to us every year astrologically during the winter solstice for three days on December 22nd, 23rd and 24th, the sun rises on the exact same latitude. This is the only time of the year that the sun completely stops moving in degrees. After these three days, on December 25th, the sun starts moving again to the northern hemisphere, taking and bringing back the light. So you can reflect on this, on this planetary scale with the story of the Christ, that God's son died for three days and on Christmas it was born again. Now, the fact that the Christ is a potentiality for all of us has deep implications to how we approach our own individual path. For those who believe that Jesus Christ is an external man who will one day save them through merely believing in him is not reflective of the precise science of the path. Even what we call black magicians believe in Christ. They know it exists and they don't like it. So to be saved is not a matter of belief. Especially about the belief that if we just believe in Jesus Christ and that just by through that belief he will save us, is absurd. Believing in him as a concept may give us nice thoughts and emotions, but it does not save us. It does not liberate us. What we need is to know what Christ is in a precise and experiential way. And not just know it, but strive to incarnate it within ourselves. We have to become practical adepts of direct experiential knowledge and learn how to reach God halfway. We have to reach our arms out to divinity, 
like a baby reaching for its parents. And then our parents also extends his arm back. This is symbolized in the creation of Adam painting by Michelangelo. We have to raise our hand, raise our willpower and actually walk the path in order to be helped. The Christmas tree also relates to this. The Christmas tree represents our inner ascension to the Christ force within us, to the Holy Spirit, to the Son, and to the Father, and beyond that, into the Absolute. And this is all why we put a star at the top of the Christmas tree. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Trinity. In Egypt, it is also represented by Osiris, Horus, and Isis. And in India, it is represented by Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. So right now, we are just seeds. Seeds that have to go through the process of germination. And the Christmas tree represents the spinal column and points to the great work of birthing and blossoming our own tree of life within us, which elevates us to the higher dimensions of nature and the higher dimensions of consciousness. If you look at any seed, a seed must die in order to sprout, in order to be born. And as we walk the path, the Divine Mother Kundalini, the Holy Spirit, raises the energy along our spinal column, which is done through sexual alchemy and killing the ego. And over time, the Christmas tree grows and grows over many years of effort in this work. And every time one of our egos dies, a virtue is born within us. And every time a virtue is born within us, our Christmas tree, our inner Christmas tree, is decorated with a bauble of light. You can also see this as seven baubles according to each chakra as Kundalini ascends up the spine. You can also relate this to the Kabbalistic tree of life lighting up each Sephiroth as we persevere on the path. So this is something really great to meditate on during this time, such as when you see your Christmas tree at home or on the streets. It is a time to reflect on this deep and profound potentiality in our seeds consciousness. And while we can and should worship the Christified masters who can help us in the inner worlds, as it says, knock and the door shall open, more importantly on the path, we should worship and follow our own particular inner individual God that is waiting to be incarnated within us on our tree of life. And we can best do that by committing seriously to the practices of annihilating the ego, completely destroying it to cosmic dust, becoming a chaste person through transmutation and alchemy, and also attaining bodhicitta, the sense of doing all of this work for others, which is also called Christ-centrism, as opposed to ego-centrism. So I hope this opens some people's minds this Christmas to the deeper universal profundity of Christ and Christ mass within us all. And I want to leave you with the most powerful ritual prayer 
and meditation in the Gnostic teachings which you can do today, which is the Pater Noster, the prayer of the Lord. This is a magical prayer with tremendous power and it's taught that if prayed properly and profoundly, it is equal to one hour of meditation. When we say profound prayer, this does not mean just saying words intellectually. That is useless. In modern Christianity, it is unfortunate that most churches today do not teach meditation and profound prayer. At the roots of Christianity, meditation was taught, and in many regards, it was just as, if not more powerful than meditation in the East. This is why Gnosis is so relevant today, because it brings back the teachings of meditation from the East and combines it with the prayer of the West to create something that is far more powerful than just meditation alone or just prayer alone. Practicing in this way, patiently and deeply, with profound concentration, leaving behind the superficial, terrestrial, earthly mind of the world, doing it in this way, we begin to produce a rare and mystical and unordinary state of vibrant harmony between the three brains which begins to gradually illuminate our consciousness towards the divine, the divine intelligence of this Christic force. Now, here's what the Master Samael taught about this prayer. It is necessary to learn how to pray the Pater Noster to learn to converse with Brahma, the Father who is in secret within us. A single Pater Noster, well prayed and wisely combined with meditation, is an entire work of high magic. A single Pater Noster, properly prayed, is done in a period of one hour. After the prayer, we must know how to await the reply of the Father within us. And this means to know how to meditate, to have the mind still and in silence, empty of all thoughts, awaiting the reply of the Father. So this prayer we're going to look at is equivalent to very deep meditation. And you can also immerse yourself into a profound state with this prayer while approaching sleep, while striving to retain your awareness at the same time. Again, this prayer should not be done mechanically, just merely intellectually, just reciting words. We need to meditate on the contents of each word intimately in order for the heart chakra to really awaken. This prayer can also protect us in times of temptation and any time we want to invoke the presence of divinity. On the screen, I'm showing you the English version of the prayer. Along with just one interpretation of it to help you deepen your understanding of it while you're watching this video here and now. But when you are praying it, it is better to not think of this interpretation, as it is just one intellectual interpretation. In meditation, we are not seeking to interpret. We are seeking the truth of it through our intuitive inner senses, which only comes through deep, still, and silent presence of the being. This prayer goes as in English, and afterwards I'm going to share the Latin version. And keep in mind, I'm saying this relatively fast for the purpose of this video. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 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 Now, the Latin language has a certain magic and power behind it. It's also very beautiful. You can also learn, remember, and use this version. Pater Noster, quies in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cello et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodie, et dimite nobis debita nostra. Sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tetationem, sed libera nos amal, quia tuum est regnum, et potestas, et gloria in secula. Amen, amen, amen. So, with that, I recommend this free online course on Glorian called The Christ, The Mystery of Light. This course describes the spiritual and psychological relationship of Christ with our place in the cosmos and explains many verses of the Bible and also the Pistis Sophia, which are teachings that Jesus left after his resurrection. Happy Christmas everyone and may the Christ be born within us all just a little more this year in our hearts to help us continue on the path. Do not feel fear for the upcoming year of 2023, brothers and sisters. Do not succumb to fear. Do not succumb to the idiocies of the ego mind. Kill fear. Kill the ego. As Master Jesus said, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword.